Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Living Large Las Vegas. My name is Kobe Sherlock, and today, back in the lab, Mr. Derek Parent. Derek, say hello to everybody. Hello, hello. Guys, today, thanks so much for tuning in and checking us out live. We do have a really cool guest for you guys today, somebody that's been a great friend to me as of recent uh, and a huge you know, supporter of our community, a super fan of Las Vegas and the good work that you're doing. Uh, today, we're bringing you Chris Chappell, who is the Director of Development uh, for Driven, uh, the Neuro Recovery Center here in Las Vegas, which is special to me. So Chris, say hello to everybody. Hey, what's up, guys? How's everybody doing? Well, man, I tell you, I, uh, for the guests listening in, why don't you share a little bit about yourself, your background, where you're from, and uh, just kind of get to know these guys. Yeah, um, my name is Chris Chappell. I'm born and raised in Las Vegas, three generations Las Vegas. My uh, grandmother was born in the mines out in Sloan oh. and uh, back in the 20s, and so Vegas is my home. I, I, I love this place. I love this community. I do a lot of community work, kind of go into some of the hard-hit areas of the, of the valleys, the high crime rate areas. One of them was called Naked City, which is the area behind Stratosphere. Um, went in, highest crime rate in Vegas, and with five years, we dropped crime between 50 to 80%. So I do a lot for our community because Vegas, I mean, I believe in the motto, what you tolerate dominates. So if we tolerate bad stuff, it will dominate. And so you just have to go in there and, then, and um, affect people's lives, you know, get to meet people, learn their first name, family stuff. And that's how you get people hope. Man, I love it. I love it. What was the crime? Did, how much did you drop the crime rate? 50 to 80% violent crime. That's incredible. Uh, Naked so, City was something else for a while. It was. You know you know how it was when yeah. growing up here. Uh, it was a place where I was always told, you never go to Naked City. You'll get shot, robbed, everything. And uh, that was where I went in in 2009. Uh, the street that we were on was uh, called Tam, and it was an open-air drug market. We'd have 40 guys out there slinging dope all the time. In fact, we had this. Uh, um, I had this community center down there, and... Um, I had this group of ladies from Summerlin that came down. They wanted to do, you know, buy pizza for the neighborhood. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool. They're driving down the street, and there's, there's 40 drug dealers, and they're all waving at them. So the lady who comes up to me afterwards, she goes, what a nice neighborhood. I look at her, and I said, what are you talking about? Everybody's waving at me. I said, no, they're trying to sell you dope. And then she's like, oh, that was weird. But 10 minutes later, she's sitting there eating pizza with the guy trying to sell her dope yeah. and building a relationship, and that's how you do it. The way I got rid of a lot of the drug dealers, because uh, narcotics dropped 80%, was I went up to the guys and I said, hey, do you guys like slinging dope? And not a single one of them said yes. I said, so why are you out here? They're like, we can't get a job because of, of a felony or a drug conviction. I said, so if I can get you a job, even if it's minimum wage, would you do it? And they all said yes. I said, okay, I'm going to hold you to it. So then I went to a warehouse that was not too far from there, and I said, hey, this is what I'm doing. Would you go and hire, a, or you hire people that I bring to you without a background check? And they said, yeah, absolutely. And that's how I got rid of the drug dealers. Wow. And that's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Literally boots on the ground. That's grassroots. Yeah, it, it was. It was very organic, very grassroots. And, and you know, I love going in and just, and just um, helping my community out. Well, tell me, you know, obviously we met, you know, recently within the year uh, because of the work that you're up to now. You want to tell us a little bit about what you're up to with Driven? Well, first off, we met because you were trying to hard sell me <laughs> to, for auction items. I'm like, dude, I work here. <laughs> and you're like, so? <laughs> Man, nobody was safe at that event. No. I was trying to get everyone to donate to our cause. It was the ABCs of sales. Always be closing, right? That's, I mean, that's always, what it was. I learned it from this guy in all asset or all areas, I should say, of my life. Yeah. Uh, that's true. I remember you were standing next to the weight uh, or like the squat machine. Yeah. Uh, I was for the crowd. I, we were at a gala uh, or a fundraising event for Driven, and I was um, auctioning, or I guess I was using playing cards as raffle tickets. I was selling raffle tickets for these guys, and Chris was standing near me. I didn't know he worked there, um, and I was definitely trying to get him to donate a ton of money through the raffle. So <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Uh, we I ended up like getting ball, rid of. Right? You did. That's yeah. what happened. That it was, was your really energy, was. Yeah. and well, we I, ended up getting rid of every single card. Yes, you did an amazing job. Thanks. Well. I would say, you know, with being next to a squat rack and, and people that way, people know exactly what Driven is. Like, tell us, I mean, Driven is an amazing organization yeah. that does some amazing things. But I would like for you to share with, the, with our community what it is because it's not a squat rack that they think it is. Right. Well, Driven is a neuro recovery center located in downtown Las Vegas. And it's there for folks with mobility issues, whether it's paralysis from a spinal cord injury, Parkinson's, MS stroke. Whatever it is, we're there. We're, we're, we're um, 
uh, um, a therapy center and a, and a community gym all in one. And it's very unique. And our founder, Sam Schmidt, he was an IndyCar racer uh, 20 years ago, got in a massive accident on, on the uh, track, became a quadriplegic. And this, kind of, this is kind of like uh, after 20 years of, of uh, nonprofit work trying to cr- find a cure, he realized, hey, I need, I need a brick and mortar here to actually help with the re- rehabilitation side of it. Because what we offer, there's no other place in town that offers it. Because most physical therapists, if they can't get muscle f- uh, firing, they can't work on you. And we're able to work with folks that are completely paralyzed and quadriplegic. And we've actually had a few of them start walking. Have you been to Dignity Health and, and seen their their quadriplegic uh, unit with their uh, machine that actually walks and does a... Yeah, we have, have one of those machines. Those. Yeah, we're actually uh, working on a partnership with them right now. Amazing. Like yeah. So we got to tour that facility and seeing you know, the, the advancement that we're starting to make. Because spinal cord in- injuries, uh, you don't really come back from them. Right. And that's where, that's where it takes specialized uh, treatment and care and, you know, stimulating nerves, trying to get the muscles to fire. And, um, but one thing that I do want to say about, about Driven, is it's, the, it's the community, it's the environment. We have folks that go in there and imagine how your life changes. Yeah. All of a sudden you're walking and maybe some tragic, a car accident or whatever, and now you're, now you're stuck in a chair. And we have a lot of folks that come to us with suicide dates already picked out. And they come to us as a last opportunity, like their family members say, hey, we need to put you here. And they're like, whatever, I'm just going to die. Well, two months later, they're laughing. They're having a great time because of the community aspect. It's the therapy aspect, the, the uh, counseling that goes, goes with it as well. It's what a great group, too. And the energy in that building, I share it every time I go down there. Sometimes I, I even put it on social media. It's, it's uh, super refreshing to see everybody really getting after what their goals are in the room. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't. Uh, I won't need to throw their names out there, but I met so many folks involved there, both, um, you know, members of the team, as well as those who are utilizing the services. And I think of one guy in particular that shared his story at the event, you know, the gentleman was in a vehicle with his brother. Uh, You know, he was shot at, um, I believe he was in, don't quote me on this, but maybe it was Chicago. I can't remember where he moved from Ohio. That's right. Ohio. Thank you. And uh, you know, that story in itself, you know, he took a bullet and, his situation now is, is much different than it was then. And the life that he brings to that yeah. building when he's, when he's in there, it's really special, man. So what you guys are doing is, is really a beautiful thing. Well, what's amazing about that gentleman is now he wants to start his own nonprofit for spinal cord injuries. Wow. And that's what we're helping him set, set up. And there's another uh, uh, person. She was shot you know, by her boyfriend and, and is in a chair, and, and she was a fitness competitor. And now all this, she's stuck. She had suicide dates set up. And now we're working on um, on creating a nonprofit for her to give back to the homeless. You know, I uh, so I have a really dear friend of mine named Gary the Tiger Boletto. He was a professional fighter out of Providence, Rhode Island. And uh, he was in his backyard. He was setting up a pole because he gymnastics. So after he won a fight, he'd walk on his hands. They get up and do the hands and walk on his hands. So he put a pole between two trees in the backyard and went to go spin on him. On, a, on his neck, and he's in a chair. But one of the most inspiring things about Gary is he's never given up on life. Like, you see him every day. He's in the gym, you know, with, he has stuff on his hands, pulling down, super you know, super strong. But Gary's very um, in, inspiring. He has a very bad, severe, and, and he says he's going to walk one day. He, he, and, and if anything, you can see the the the. the, the the look in his eyes that he's, he's going to do it. And, you know, just to hear what you guys are doing here, it resonates with someone that's actually a friend of mine for many of years. Yeah. And to see how, you know, he was on top of the world, and I believe he still is on top of the, uh, of, of the world, just like Sam is, right, but just in a different position. Well, the thing with that, wait, um, you have different personalities, and Gary and Sam are very similar. I mean, Sam is an entrepreneur. He still owns his racing, uh, has an IndyCar racing team, and travels half of the year. And he's a full quadriplegic. He's somebody that said, even in this hospital bed, you know, injuries fresh, life is completely transformed and changed. He's like, no, I'm going to be able to walk someday. And to have that determination and drive is awesome. That's rare. And now we have the rest of people come in with no hope. Like yeah. I've been this way for three years. There's no hope. Well, guess what I do? Myself and the staff, we bring hope. We give people hope. And if somebody has hope, now they have the ability to actually accomplish it. If you remember back in the 50s, the, uh, to, break, to break the uh, th- uh, five-minute mile was, was impossible until Roger Bannister did it. Yeah. Then later on that year, four other people did it after that. Why? Because it became possible. 
So if you have hope, you can you can attain really much anything that you want. Hundred percent. It's a good reminder. You know, we keep the the painting uh, from Sam right up here on the wall in the podcast room. I don't think I can't remember if you guys can see it on the camera or not, but we have a painting in here that Sam did himself uh, with his mouth uh, that I got at another event you guys hosted and you guys gifted it to me. And um, it, it is it's really a beautiful thing. It's a nice reminder. Yeah. You know, it, it is persistence. It's the will, Derek. We talk about that a lot. You know, having yeah. the will to get through things, and this is just a different kind of challenge that. Uh, these individuals face and man, do they push through? I remember just, uh, we're currently right now working on some things. And I remember sitting with a young lady and man, her energy is so big. She, she has such a big vision for what she's up to wanting to be a, uh, an event planner, essentially, uh, coordinating things like races and things like that. And every time I see her, it's just an immediate light up, you know, you can feel her energy and what she's doing and her drive, um, well, you driven it's appropriate. Well, they don't want People in that situation don't want you to feel sorry for them. Mm -hmm. They want they want to get back into normal society, be productive, and that's one of the things that we're that we're working on on providing is is skilled training to where we can transition somebody from okay, you're on Medicare, disability, whatever it is. Well, how if you get to the point where like you know I think there's more I can offer more. How can we transition you into that type of a job where it's not a minimum wage job, but it's a job that's a skilled set job that we can put you out there where you are making the money where you do not need to rely on. On, uh, on the welfare side of things. And that's where a lot of our folks are at right now. They're wanting to transition because they've been in it for, and we've only been open just over a year. And they've been in the program for about a year, and now they're like, oh, we want to do more. So you've been open for a year, but you guys are coming up on an anniversary, right? A big yeah. milestone? Yeah, 20th anniversary since Sam's accident. Um, and then also 20th anniversary of Conquer Paralysis Now, which is kind of like the, the mother um, uh, entity that Driven is under. And so for about... I guess you'd say 18 years, we were helped funding a cure for uh, spinal cord injuries. So we worked with the Reese Foundation and different universities and helped fund studies that way. You know, spinal cord, in, you know, um, it's, it's a field that there's not a, a ton of doctors in and a very specialized, you know, uh, field, mm -hmm. very specialized practice. How has the uh, reception, we talk about how awesome Vegas is for you guys and yeah. it is new. How's the reception been? Oh, it's been amazing. It's been amazing. In fact, I was brought on to kind of help it give us exposure in Las Vegas and with the city has is, is been a great partner to work with. Um, Councilwoman Olivia Diaz and then, of course, Mayor Goodman. They're, they're, they're amazing folks and they're basically helping us with whatever we need help with. Um, right now, we're, we're in, the, in the midst of transitioning because we're, we're, at, we're, we're at capacity right now and we haven't even advertised. We have, we have 80, 85 clients that come in all the time and we're at 7,500 square feet. We need more, and we want to become essentially the, the male clinic for, for, for um, mobility rehab, and that's what we're working on right now. What's the average time that those 80, 85 people spend there? It depends. It's personalized. So oh, somebody personalized. Might, yeah, so somebody may want one day a week at, at an hour and a half, or somebody may do two or, th or three or four days at two hours a session. So it's, it's, it really depends on, what, they, on what, what the need is and what they want. But also, one thing I do want to mention, because we are a nonprofit, we don't turn anybody away. Yeah. Whether they can pay for it or not, we're there to help them out. In fact, some of our clientele we've seen on the streets, uh, you know, panhandling. Say, yeah. hey, how'd you get in that situation? Why don't you come on down and uh, we'll help you out with that. And so it's it's really a cool, it's an eclectic bunch of folks. It's a motley crew, yeah. And that's why it kind of I think gives it a lot of life. You ever have that? that you ever have the ones that just are there just to hang around, just to be the yeah. the, the nuisance, the you know, the, the pain in the butt inside the gym? Always. <laughs> you, have, you have at least three or yeah. four of those. Yeah. Every once in a while, the train you'll hear the trainer saying. No, oh, you can't do that. And they're they're yelling, saying, "Of course I can do it. I can do whatever I want." But you know, but it's all fun. You yeah, know, they're 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 having a good time, and it's for for a lot of folks because if you're disabled and you're in a wheelchair, you're pretty much shut in. Yeah, and it's hard to get out. And so this is the excuse, the reason for them to get out for two, three hours um, that day, hopefully a couple multiple times a week, and it's it does a lot for them. So if somebody wants to throw a little, you know, a little, little add to whatever, get a little honorary. Hey, that's fine. We can throw it back to our trainers <laughs> yeah. are tough, man. They're, they're tough. They'll say, Oh yeah, you didn't like that. Do this. Ow, that hurts. Okay. That's what I thought, you know? So it's, it's a good, it's a good environment. It keeps them growing, keeps man. Them growing. It keeps us going. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then we have a big event coming up. I, we had it's funny, yeah. well, not funny, but we, we actually host you guys a couple of times a month with, uh, you know, in our, in, in our office. So, you know, thank yeah. you for allowing us to be a part of it, but, you know, tell us about, you know, the up and coming event where, you know, we want the community to get involved and, and, yeah. and, and come join us. Well, first of all, we, I would do want to thank you guys because you guys are amazing partners. You guys stepped up when, when Kobe came in and said, Hey, 
we want to do a big event for you. I'm like, okay, let's do it. Cause I love your energy behind it. And, and, and it's amazing. Cause it's such a worthy cause. The way I look at it is like, why wouldn't you want to get involved with this? You hear the stories, you hear the testimonies, and it's great. So we're working on a 5K. Um, this will be May 2nd. It's a 5K slash fun run slash car show. So we're going to have the car show element there with Sam. He'll have his, he'll have, uh, hopefully he'll have his Corvettes because Sam's the only quadriplegic in the country that has an actual driver's license because he's able to drive one of these cars that were designed specifically for him. In fact, if you go on YouTube, you can look up Jay Leno and, and Sam Schmidt. And you can see that... Uh, Jay Leno got a little, little sick because Sam was driving so fast in this car. So we'll have the car show, um, the car show element there. There'll be adaptive vehicles there. And then we're going to have a, a, you know, just a, a big fun run for everybody. We want folks with, with um, mobility issues or any disability to come on out. And it's open to the general public. But we want to integrate the two because there's really no difference. A person is a person yes. regardless on their condition or, or whatever it is. Um, I've been talking with a, a, a large uh, nonprofit here in town that focuses on mental disabilities. And we want to get their folks to come out, too. We just want to have a big block party and celebrate, celebrate everybody there. And so far, um, we've gotten a great response. Yeah, it's been great, man. I know that the volunteers that are working with us and the folks supporting the committee on planning, it's been a constant excitement. Uh, and and for anyone listening, come out. I mean, we like Chris said, it's May 2nd. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. If you want to run in it and join us in the race, come join us. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but just the block party element, if you just want to come out and experience something different and, in, and just see incredible work that's going on right here in our neighborhood in Las Vegas, Come hang out because, man, I'm telling you, when I walked in the first day, uh, and and it's not like I was, you know, completely aware of what I was getting into when I first got involved with Driven, just to be honest. Uh, Jane introduced me to someone who was uh, setting up the event that I volunteered for. And sure enough, when, when you're there, it's a game changer. Yeah. Everything shifts. Yeah. It's a whole different perspective, and it's something that I 100% stand behind. Uh, and I hope that others will have a lot of fun with it, too, and really make a splash here in Vegas when we come out on May 2nd. Absolutely. Well, I was going to ask you that. Uh, why and how did you get involved? Because this isn't, you know, our typical um, stuff that we've typically done. That's but, right. You know, what what got you there? For me, uh, so Jane met uh, a lady who at the time was uh, coordinating their event here in Las Vegas, um, looking for volunteers to support. Jane got involved first. Uh, but Jane was pregnant. And so the event that they ended up putting the date on was going to be right in the way of when uh, Leah was born. Uh, and so sure enough, Jane, you know, got us in involved. She brought me in the support on the back end because of my event experience. And I was able to help at the time, Amy Daniels, get, uh, you know, some of these things coordinated with a few of the folks on that committee. So it started out us meeting here, you know, randomly. Uh, we then, you know, really got behind what was going on. And then I got to the event on the day of, it was right after Leo was born. I went uh, and Dwayne went um, and we had a great time. And the first night was essentially, and you can help me out. It was more of a cocktail yeah. kind of reception for the big donors coming in from across the country. Yeah. And then the next day was over at Speed Vegas. Uh, they did um, a really cool opportunity. You essentially could get laps in the vehicle with Sam uh, for donations, which yeah. I think is incredible. Um, or you can, you know, pay to ride with other professional racers. And so just, you know, that's how I got involved was on the planning side and giving side. But when I got there, it's just incredible, man. The, the, the folks that are involved, the vision, Sam, once you see him speak and you hear him speak, it's unbelievable what he's up to. Uh, and obviously it's poured out right here in the community and it's very grassroots for me. It was yeah. easy to love and attach myself to because it's small. Yeah. It's one of those things where you know, right where the money's going. Uh, I, one of my favorite parts of the, um, of the auction, uh, was when, uh, you know, we're literally, you know, people say, oh, if you could donate 10 or $20, whatever you got. But in this case, we were going down to donating to cover people's hour to get yeah. a workout in. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was super special, you know, literally dollar from the pocket right into affecting someone yeah. directly with the smallest amount. Yeah. Huge. So that's what I loved about it. That's how I got involved. And I'm super grateful that you guys let me hang around and uh, be the guy that comes by the gym and just watches a little bit gotta get you working out in that gym you're, i'm you're, ready how, how's the workout going it's been good adam gents shout out to you my friend and of course i got to keep up with this guy who's super fit over here uh but adam's been great we uh hired adam gents as a, our personal trainer at strength center in henderson and he's an incredible coach uh and really a good trainer it's been good get you ready for that 5k i'm ready man <laughs> <laughs> but for you chris tell me like you know you're working in the city 
you, you, we got all of these folks coming around uh, to support you. Uh, you know, what is the big vision for Driven here in Las Vegas? To be the epicenter for uh, for mobility rehabilitation. We're uh, starting to uh, create partnerships with um, other entities. We're, we're looking to help uh, to tie in with the Lou Ruvo as far as the, with their, their um, brain um, research and we want to be the rehabilitation part of it and so we're working to try with other groups around like UCLA or other folks to to be that place we want medical tourism here in Las Vegas and that's a hot button with the city and so we want to be that place where people will come from around the world to say hey I can get help here there's hope here and that's really where the message what we're trying to do yeah you know be being around a lot of that the healthcare stuff you really see uh, a lot more in it well you see a lot of innovation it was 20 years ago you couldn't get any procedures done here you had to go out of, mm-hmm. out of you know now you see more and more stuff stuff here and a lot of great doctors that we get to hang around with and, and know more and more about you know but i know and you know sp- spinal cord is one of those things it's you know it's a specialty you know thing and you know it's it's still you know cutting edge technology well, and think of it this way, it's not only the spinal cord, it's the, the neurological side. You look at neurology, there's not a test to diagnose any neurological disease. It's really just, a, we have a bull, and we have like MS, Parkinson's, ALS, we have all these things. And basically, we're just pulling out, say, uh, you don't have the symptoms here, you don't have the symptoms here, uh, maybe you have X, Y, and Z. And it's, it's, uh, it's just, a, it's, a very, it's a very hard field, but you look at neurological diseases are on the rise. Nothing to test for. Well, that's yeah. There's, not, there's nothing to test for, and so there's there's a limited amount of folks that that have the have the um, the ability to really help those people. And being uh, born and raised in Vegas, you've been here 20 years. You know we haven't had the best reputation for our medical community, no. but that has changed. Mm-hmm. It's starting to change, and that's what we're excited about. Um, working to partner with a large group here, um, hopefully to to expand our, our 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 building. But medical tourism is a big part of it. They're looking. You know, there's a big push within the city to say, hey. Come to Vegas. Not only you can bring your sports teams here and everything else like that, but come to Vegas because you can actually get the help that you're looking for. With three generations being here, did you ever think that you'd have a sports team? Did you ever no. think that you'd have a medical, you know, the medical no. uh, uh, trade shows coming here? Would you, would you ever think any of this stuff where we're at now versus, you know, your grandma, 1920, she yeah. came here. So, and then you being born, you, I mean, look at it. I mean, our, our city is, is, is flourishing. Oh, it's amazing. And, and you think about it. Um, we grew so fast. I mean, you think about it. We hit our growth spurts in the mid '90s. Yes. When 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 the housing prices were down, everybody from California came over, and that's when we started to explode. And we're at two and a half million, soon to be three million people in the valley. Yeah. I mean, that that's amazing. But it shows the idea. Why is Vegas so unique? Is because um, compared to other places around the country, and I actually spent six months last year in Chicago helping another nonprofit out and seeing kind of how the city and nonprofit communities and business communities don't work together well there. Vegas, the environment is set up, and it's because we as Vegans, Las Vegans, and um, Nevadans, we have this kind of this this rebel attitude where it's like whatever's good for our state, whatever's good for our city. We're going to put away the party lines and it's come together for the greater good. Yeah. And Vegas is very unique in that manner. And that's why the city will work with, with, with folks like us, with folks like you guys, and really want to accomplish some great things. And I think we're, over the last 20 plus years, you see the fruit of that. And it's that, it's that mentality of, of what's good for Vegas is what's going to be promoted. You know, we, uh, yeah, the city is definitely in, in partnership. You know, and that's the biggest thing. You know, the city's not there to take anything, but, you know, speed and, and expedite the processes for the, the real people that are doing the work in this yeah. community. You're right. There's no e- ego. The party lines go away, yeah. and it's about helping other people. You know, it's the same thing that came down to the homeless, you know, stuff that was yeah. done that people realized that we weren't trying to put people in jail. We are just trying to get them to safer areas, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, that, and, and, and then, you know, this I mayor mean, took a lot of slack on that. But, you know, it comes out, where it's helping. And, and that's exactly what the city and what this state does. You know, we're a, really, we're a part of Henderson, and yeah. they do an amazing job, and Las Vegas is doing an amazing job, and just a, a tremendous amount of leaders that care. Yeah. You know, you, you would think, yeah. you know, like, ah, it's really, you look at the politicians around the country, it's normally it's what's best for them. Yeah. But you can see in the city, most of the politicians, if not, I would say, a majority of them, it's all about what they can do for this community. And you see it every single day. Oh, you see it. And what's great about it is they're approachable. Yeah. I mean, if you want to meet anybody, during the middle of the, of the uh, um, 
city council meetings, they take a break and they meet with people for about 30 minutes and then they go back and do the meeting. Yeah. It's like, it's just really cool. Everybody's approachable um, and they're willing to listen. I mean, because the mayor did take a lot of heat for that. In fact, you want to must see TV, it's called Channel 2. Just watch the city council yeah. meetings and you'll see some fireworks. It's, it's amazing. But she took a lot of heat from that. And I know a lot of folks in that, um, in that uh, homeless world, in that nonprofit world, who are really harsh. And it, wasn't, it was uncalled for. But she was willing to, to sacrifice you know, any little popularity to do the right thing. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's, that's key to it. You know, it's funny, you know, I actually, so go down to City Hall and sit through one of those. I actually did it and come from a neutral place and listen to both sides. Yeah. It was, you know, it's fascinating on what you would learn because everyone has a different uh, a perspective. And, you know, just to see, you know, that what you guys are doing, I mean, it hits a lot of us. You know, we probably own, I know another friend of mine who was in a wheelchair and, you know, there's no limitations with Pat, Pat Russo. He has no limitations and, you know, he, he's, he's, he, right now, he's doing a fundraiser to go to a program called Journey Within. It's like a six-month pr okay. program of personal development. And, you know, he, he, he makes cutting boards. Okay. Right? And he finishes them, and he sells them. Yeah. Right? I mean, he really, I mean, he drives. He's in a car, and, you know, he drives. And, you know, he, uh, from the waist up, he, he's good. But from the waist down, you know, he, he can't do too much, right? Yeah. But just to see him drive in, like, and he was one of those guys where he was down and depressed and, came out of it. So you can only imagine what people are going through when they lose their ability to do the basic things that we get to do every morning. That's stick our feet out of bed, stand up. And, you know, we sometimes take that for granted. And someone only wishes, you know, and so I was somewhere Saturday night and I was watching a young lady be pushed in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, honestly, I sat back in myself and I was so, I was so grateful, right? One that you know, I'm thinking to myself, well, I, I bet, you know, her only one maybe wish that she can get up and, and walk. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there so grateful that I'm walking and enjoying the air. I'm enjoying the trees. I'm enjoying the walk, right? It was at, it was at Mesa Park. And uh, I was just so grateful. I was in gratitude. And, you know, we get to do really some of the basic things that most people can't. So what yeah. you're doing is truly your pillar in our the community. And you're so grateful that you get to come in here and share these stories oh, with yeah. us because this is something that we love doing is giving back. And if we can educate anyone on what you're doing yeah. and get down there and volunteer time, just be a part of what you're doing. Yeah. Come join the 5K with us. Just get involved because this is truly one of the greatest organizations and it, it's, it impacts a lot of people in so many ways. It does. Well, you know, one of the things that I, I look at it from from another standpoint as well, there's another there's another victim to... to uh, um, a tragic event where there's mobility issues in a wheelchair and it's the family because all of a sudden everything could be going great. And then now you have a, your family member who's now life altered. Well, that also alters your life. And now you're forcing in a situation where you're a caregiver. And I've been in that situation with my ex-wife. She had a brain disease and she was paralyzed for three years and no, we had no answers from the medical community had driven been around. It would have been amazing for us because she, uh, she couldn't get the care. We went to Mayo Clinic, UCLA, nobody can help her. And the depression that happened, not only to her, but to me and to my kids, because it was uh, having to uh, resuscitate her 15 times a day because she'd have these neurological seizures and stop breathing. And just all these different things, there's a lot to it. And so the caregiver, that's one thing that why I, um, I came on board with Driven is because they, they reach out and they do, there's a lot of counseling and therapy and group sessions for everybody to be involved because everybody needs that help. Yeah. Everybody needs that hope. And that's the, that's, that's the one thing that they're the forgotten folks. So when we do the 5K and you, you see the caregivers and the families out there, go up to them and thank them. Just go up to them and thank them and say, hey, we're with you. We're praying for you. We're, we're thinking of you. And that, that goes a long way. It's the hero's journey. Yeah. That's it, man. No. Yeah. Well, I, I, for folks that are listening in, Chris, what's the best way for them to get involved with Driven if they want to come out and support? We'll come up to, um, well, you can come down to the facility. It's 701 East Bridger, right next to LVA. Uh, Bridger and 7th, or you can come on down, um, go to the Facebook website, Driven LV, same for Instagram, Driven LV, and uh, we'd love to have you guys, because we're about, uh, after our meeting on Wednesday, when we, we solidified, that's when everything goes live with with the uh, 5K registration, 
and we'll be we'll be blasting that around so oh relentlessly so guys be looking out relentlessly we will be in your face with this awesome 5k uh it's gonna be a great little fun run we're gonna have a good time together so be looking out that comes after wednesday we'll send all the details then on the 5k um but man thank you you know thank you for coming out and hanging out this is cool uh it's really you know great just to hear your story and your experience we're driven and really how our worlds meet and derek's right we just love giving and when we can do one, you know, work with a group that is, you know, Vegas born and, you know, in, a, in its own sense. Um, yeah. And of course, in supporting Sam's vision and coming from, uh, you know, the national standpoint or even international, you guys get folks from all over. So thanks again, man. And uh, anything we can do to help you, please let us know. Is there thank a number that they can reach out to you? Well, thank I want to thank you guys because uh, um, in the nonprofit, I've been doing nonprofits for a little over 10 years. And honestly, it's the heart of the business community. You guys make such a huge difference, whether it's it's volunteer support, financial support. You guys do it. And so I thank you for what you guys are doing and even allowing me to be on TV. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you're pretty good at this, by the way. It's, it's time on, for you to have a podcast. I, we, we need to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it's, it's, you know, we honor. Yeah, it's my yeah. honor to be in your presence with such amazing stuff that you're doing because it takes a special person to do what you're doing and you're a special man and our community is lucky to have you in it and, and doing what you're doing. So thank you. I you know, we, that. we truly thank you and admire you for being here. Yeah. Thank you. And That's of course, right. when you get back, give everybody the love, if they're not already watching uh, down at the center, you know, I got mad love for those guys. Oh, you're awesome. Well, that's how you friends live in large Las Vegas. You literally never know who we're going to have in here. Uh, Chris Chapel, rock star driven, check it out. If you don't know about it, go learn about it. If you've never been there, Go there if you just want to get involved. Coming at you May 2nd for the 5K. Living large Las Vegas. We're coming back to you live for another session.